In this episode, we explore nested ifs. Now, pay close attention because this can get rather complex. We covered the if function and how it implements conditional statements and Boolean logic in the last episode. If that's a little fuzzy, you might want to go back and review. You can watch the podcast or go over the documentation for the if function. You'll find it in the logical grouping and make sure to open it up so you can read the entire documentation. You know an if function returns a value depending on the truth value of its condition. The if function has three parameters enclosed within parentheses and separated by commas. The if expression is a condition or a logical expression which is either true or false. When the if expression is the number zero, it's false. But it's true for any other numeric value. In our example, we tested the value of cell J2 to see if it was greater than or equal to 0.9. Now let's turn our attention to the if true and if false parameters. These are the actions you want to take based upon the truth value of the if expression. These parameters can be of any value type, including a string. In our example, we use the strings A and F. These parameters may also be numbers or a cell address like J2 or an arithmetic formula or even another function. That's how we build a nested if. This is our if expression. Our if true parameter and the if false parameter. To build a nested if, we simply replace the if false parameter with another if function. We can continue doing that until we've represented every single grade in our grading scale. Let's try it out. Okay, this is where we left off. And I think we agreed that it was unfair just to pass out A's and F's. So, we want to build a nested if so that students can get whatever grade they earned, A, B, C, D, or F. Again, we're going to do it with nested ifs. And I always like to edit at the top so I can copy down in one direction. So let's come back up and let's rebuild this function. So I'm going to say J2 greater than or equal to 0.9 comma is an A comma. Now I'm on the fault side so my if false expression will be if J2 is greater than or equal to 0.8 for 80%, then it's a B, comma, quote, B, end quote. Now, if it's not an A and it's not a B, I'll put in another if function, if J2 is greater than or equal to 0.7 for 70%. 
comma, quote, C, end quote. So 70% and above would be a C. Don't worry about the A's and the B's. We've already taken care of them. So now I'm going to test for the D's. So I'll say if parentheses J2 is greater than or equal to 0.6 for 60%, comma, D in quotes, comma, and then this is the false side of this last expression looking for the D's. If it's not an A, not a B, not a C, and not a D, it's an F. And then I need to put in my right parentheses, one for each of my if statements or if functions. So that's one, two, three, four. Okay, so Bonnie still has an A. Let's copy that down and see what happens. Okay, well, we've got A's, we've got B's, we've got C's. We don't have any D's or F's. So let's play around with our data. Let's say that Joe over here got a 6 all the way across. So Joe would have a D. Now let's come down to Mike and we'll give Mike fives all the way across. And there's our test for the F. So all of our grades work. Next time, we'll learn how to count the number of students that earn each of the letter grades.